There he goes. Uh, here's a bat. He's a cutie. Welcome back to Chad Family Farm. It is the 27th of October and we are here this morning. We already got Bo ran and we're running, or I'm running Rocky right now and then we're gonna head to the barn. Jocelyn's letting her chickens out too. Are you ready? Okay. Pippin came up with the baby rabbit. So, Papa got it away from him and he's gonna take it home and see if he can get it better. Yeah. He's a cutie. Is it hurt real bad? No, it's not it's hurt real bad. I don't know why it ain't no rowdy and what it is. It might be it's just a little cold or something. Papa's gonna release you out of his house. I got a tree or two over that needs to chew down. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to feed the sheep and then I'm going to feed hay. But you've seen the sheep before, you've seen the horses before, you've seen me feeding them all before multiple times. So I'm not actually going to record any, but then I'll pick up the camera afterwards unless something entertaining happens then I'll record but as of right now I'm not going to record doing chores over here because it's kind of boring and you've seen it multiple times so well I had to come down here and open up this door and when I opened this door I heard a squeaking and a squawking and I'll show you what we have here if you can see, you see, you can't, oh, you can barely see it. You see that lump there? Nope, you can't, you guys can't. Let's try that. Oh, there you go. You see that lump? That's a bat. And I think that one's okay, but it was a squalling. But when I opened that door, I heard it one squalling, and it had fallen down. And poor guy, he didn't make it. But uh, here's a bat. If you've never seen a bat, there was two of them right there in the same spot this one's freshly dead and I certainly didn't mean to kill it some people don't like bats I don't mind them but that's a bat <coughs> and uh he uh poor guy he he was just in this little crack here Let me show this one. and I opened that door just pulled this open and it scruffed them up. They were both in here. One of them's okay, one of them's not. You can kinda maybe see that, I don't know, hard to see. But uh, he's in there and I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not, but that one seems to be all right. Bats eat a lot of mosquitoes. This one didn't make it. So this was a casualty, an a certainly an accidental casualty. But that's a bat, freshly dead. But see, it's like 25 degrees out here right now. It's kind of cold. There he is. You can see the veins. We'll hold him up to the sun here. Yeah, I guess I'm in my own shadow, but that's him. We'll put him somewhere. Maybe a cat will find him. Sorry. Sorry, guy. It was not intentional. I didn't do it. Oh, you see, look at his little, on his end of his claws, or on his wings. He's actually, those are fingers. If you can see, yeah, there you go. The camera's kind of picking it up. That's a finger right there. At the end, he, he can climb with that. 
His little feet. We don't have a whole lot of bats, but Iowa do, does have some brown bats. All right, we finished over at the barn. We fed some hay. Then we came over here and got our trail camera down. And maybe if we have any good pictures on there, we'll show you some. All right, we're back from the barn now, and I'm going to head up here to the lean-to and just get a couple chunks of rat bait because we saw, me and Dad were walking down by the dryer the other day, and there's some major rat diggings there. There's a nice tunnel going down, like, through the corn, old corn and the auger and stuff. So we're going to put some rat bait out, um, get rid of those before they do any damage, so... I'm gonna come up here and grab a couple chunks and go down there. And dad wanted to help me place it just to make sure we get it in the best spot that we can. So, so that's what I'm gonna do. So Abby probably told you uh, that we got some rats. We're gonna show you the rats. I'll show you what we're putting out here. You see that? That's called chunk rat bait. And uh, this uh, is the green block. They have red block. I think they have yellow block. Primarily, you have green and red. I think that covers a lot of it. And you, what you do is you rotate between the two so they don't become resistant to it. It's important not to let flies, rodents, or weeds become resistant. Contrary to what some wackos might tell you from the west coast and big cities that have no clue we don't just go out here dumping massive amounts uh, uh crazy amounts of chemicals and we we only we're kind of farmers we're kind of stingy as it is so we're going to do the minimum and if anything we don't use enough so I'm not just going to go out here and put massive amounts of nitrogen on to run off and go down there into the Gulf of Mexico. Because that's money lost. Any nitrogen I lose, it serves me no purpose to lose nitrogen. So why do I want to put more nitrogen on? And why do I want to put it on in a way that it's going to end up down in the Gulf of Mexico? I don't. So I want my nitrogen to stay on my ground. I put out enough for that crop. It's a science. This isn't just a bunch of old uh, morons. You know, I know Mike Bloomsburg says anybody can farm and you just go out and, and throw some seed out and it grows and, and you become rich. Contrary to what idiots think, it's a lot more to that. We know exactly how much nutrient that crop takes. We know exactly how much it, it uh, took away from the ground. And you need to have your soil built up. Now, there are some kind of loser renters around. Um, and, you know, they might own... 20 their own acres and then they go out and rent and we call we we call those land rapers and they'll rent ground and never put back onto that ground they're renting it from some old widow lady and that they 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 deceive and they can flatter into letting them do something and and then they take and they just destroy that property they don't use proper tillage they don't add any drain factor no tile they don't do uh, good work on the waterways and you go in there after they get done and the land has no fertility no organic matter there's uh, uh, billions of seed, uh, uh, chemical resistant seeds in there ditches along the waterways and those are they're land rapers there's a few of those around but i'll tell you the people the good farmers the ones that take it serious now those are land rapers and hobby farmers. The good farmers, we know exactly how much chemical to put out there. You don't go out there with some stupid cockamamie cockeyed concoction to try to kill weeds with magic. You know what you're doing. You, you need to get the weeds killed. And you need to do it with the minimum amount of, of chemical, but you need to be willing to put enough out there to get them killed. And then you go out there and you, and you have to take care of that soil you aerate the soil you oxygenate the soil the soil is a living organism and you have to do right you put the appropriate amount of fertility back not just nitrogen you don't just go out there and slap some nitrogen on steal you some from some cousins down in the south or something and go slop it on whenever you get a chance 
and hope for t take whatever you can off because you're kind of screwing the widow lady out of it now when you own the ground and the good farmers that rent ground you put that you build your soil up to an optimum level and you put enough on there that that crop's going to bring it back down and you stay in the optimum level okay and uh most farmers are not land rapers they will take good care of their land waterways uh, uh tillage appropriate tillage uh fertility chemicals and what happens is if you don't kill a, a weed you're creating a weed uh, that will be resistant to that chemical so if you don't put enough chemical on that it becomes the weed gets an immunity to it like we get an immunity from viruses and we have now roundup resistant roundup who use nobody roundups nothing but a grass killer anymore nobody cares about roundup anymore i don't know why everybody's freaking out roundups ancient history because what happened was is the worst weeds are now resistant to roundup and you could spray a whole entire field with roundup and and most of it would stay alive it'd kill the grass because there's so many the weeds are so resistant to roundup that you can't kill them and um with with rodents you need to alternate you go green and red and your rodents don't become resistant to this chemical this we put out two blocks if they eat this and they're still around we'll put out two more blocks i don't just go and dump a whole bucket there and say okay any wildlife that wants to come up and die Farmers aren't that way. I'm putting out the bare minimum amount, and, I, and I'm going to go back and make sure they get enough to kill them. And then in, in the next time I buy rat bait, I'll buy red stuff so that they don't become resistant to it. Fly tags. You need to alternate the fly, fly tags. You put fly tags on your calves' ear, and then the, they keep the flies away. If you're not careful, you will create flies that are resistant to one type of a chemical, one insecticide. So you alternate the chemicals that you use in the ear tags and uh, um, insecticides so that flies don't become resistant farming is high tech high intelligence stuff if you do it right and granted there's a few idiots out there a few hobby farmers that they don't really know what they're doing and they don't do it right but 99.9% .9 of the people farming ha ha it's been filtered out where they know what they're doing and they do a good job so we're gonna go around here and bait some rats uh, look at here this was clean when we shut this dryer down just a couple weeks ago and we got some moisture all of this has been rolled out and that's rat and so there's a good chance there's a rat in there now and he's dug a hole on that side and he's fluffed this all up. Now it's frozen. So when you put rat bait out, just go ahead and make sure that something else, that like innocent animals aren't going to come along and eat it. This is a perfect place to put it. Throw it right down in there. Now we're going to go around here and lift a few items up and we might come up on a rat and either Rocky will get it or we'll stomp it. But if you low his, his burrow, he's digging in it's most likely right here that's probably soft there and we may if rocky has stay around we may be able to dig down right here and catch the burrow that's part pr pretty hard ground might have some right there so we'll probably just throw this other chunk in we may do a little bit more looking that's rat control. And we'll come back and check that and make sure it's getting eaten. Okay, we've got our rat bait out, but we're going to go around. We're going to see if we can't find them and boost them out and try to stomp on them. Sometimes you can dig them out. We've got a granny video, how Emma dumps and, and finds grinnies. But we, we need to get this cleaned up, but the chickens are enjoying it. I don't know if you can see that. It's a mess, and that's half rotten corn. That attracts rats and mice. It's just part of it. It's, a, it's a, not a happy part of it, but we'll eventually get that cleaned up and get it out there. But there's just grain attracts pests. So we're going to go down here and I think there might be some. I think there might be one under this, this mower down here. So we're going to go down here. Uh, they could be anywhere. Watch out here. Okay, you got to get ready to stomp it. Um... 
Emma, come up here and, and, and you be ready to help me stomp on this rat. If he's there. You lift it up and I'll stomp on him. Now, if you want to stomp on rats, I don't know that we'll see it. Either have rubber boots on or rubber band your pants legs or else they'll go up in your pants legs because rats freak out. So, mice too. So, we've all got rubber boots on with our pants legs down in our rubber boots. So, we're a little bit safer. But, uh, lots of times you can have a dog or a cat with you and that's pretty handy too. But, we're going to see if he's under here. I doubt it. But, uh, lift up the, that. You get it. Oh, uh, nothing. Okay. We'll throw that up by the band when we go. So, uh, we'll take that. We, we throw that up there sometime, Emma. But I think there might be a hole down here. So, uh, just, Emma, look for that hole. Okay, watch, Emma. Watch, he could be under that mower now. He's around here somewhere. There he is! There he goes! <laughs> Got him! Ah, got him! We're having Chinese tonight! Y'all come back now, dear.